Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest is the chief Washington correspondent for ABC News and co-anchor of This Week. He's just written a new book, Tired of Winning, Donald Trump and the End of the Grand Old Party. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jonathan Carl. <laughs> Nice, nice to have you back. I'll always, always enjoy your uh, reportage. Um, last time you were here, it was for your book, uh, Betrayal, mm -hmm. the final act of the Trump show. Now you have uh, another book called Tired of Winning Donald Trump and the, what's it say, the end of the grand old party. I want to fact check you, okay. okay, right off the bat, because I know you respect that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Your last book was called Betrayal, the final act of the Trump show, then why is there another book, John Carl? <laughs> did you, did the final, in the last book, was everything a lie or just the title? <laughs> Do you often lie to your public? Uh, apparently there was a, a, an unplanned sequel in the works that I just didn't know about. Were you um, surprised that there's more to the Trump show? Uh, uh, look, I thought that that was the final act. I mean, you know, I thought maybe we would have a little curtain call, but I, I, nobody thought that you would go from there and see him mount a comeback to once again becoming the dominant figure in the Republican Party. Nobody, I mean, he left Washington in disgrace, mm -hmm. defeated, impeached, on the verge of being prosecuted. I mean, the idea that he would come back? There's no way Voldemort will come back. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> There's no stories where that ever happens. <laughs> okay, uh, book's already getting a lot of buzz. Uh, here's what one guy had to say about your book. He said, Failed ABC News reporter Jonathan Carl just wrote another bad book. He works so hard but has so little talent. Some people have it, some people don't. <laughs> Your response, what's uh, what, how, do you, how, do you, how do you like the review? Yeah, no, it was, it was good. Uh, what, what's interesting is, is it was one thing specifically that set him off. Uh, and it wasn't that I said, uh, you know, found out that his top uh, strategist was using Confederate code words for, for the Confederate plot to assassinate Abraham Lincoln to describe Trump's campaign theme. What? It wasn't the... I'm sorry, what was that last one? No, no he, uh, his top strategist, Steve Bannon, used Confederate, the Confederate code word to describe the assassination plot on Lincoln to describe Trump's campaign, come retribution. It wasn't that. That's not what got him upset. It's not what he contested. It wasn't that he that I talked about Waco, Texas, and the significance of him starting his campaign in Waco, Texas, uh, the place that inspired the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995. That's not what he took issue with. It's not that I found that so many people close to him literally think that he was mentally unstable, and uh, you know, it's not not any of that. The thing that set him off was an anecdote about Kim Kardashian in the book. <laughs> it's true. Wow. That's, that's oh. the one thing that he's... What is the thing? Up. What did she do? Did she break the internet? What, what, what did she do? Uh, there, there are a couple little Kim Kardashians. You know, Kim Kardashian, of course, has taken on this cause of criminal justice reform and tried to get pardons and clemency for people who have been wrongly accused. Sure, one of the, one of yeah. the positive aspects of that administration. I mean, uh, and, and, and she got Alice Johnson famously pardoned. Well, at the very end of the Trump White House, she made one last effort. She had a list of people that she felt deserved pardons or clemency. And he said, okay... You want me to do this for you. Get me some NFL stars to come to the White House. Get me some NFL stars to come to... And, and Kim Kardashian, being really dedicated to this cause, went to her friends, uh, NFL friends. You know, she used to be with Reggie Bush. She knows some of these guys. And, and, um, and they all refused. It was after January 6th. None of them wanted oh, to go to the White right, House. That's right. And, Good call. And, and the reason why he was so desperate to get NFLers to come is because Bill Belichick, if you remember, he gave a... Presidential Medal of Freedom, and Belichick refused to come to the White House after January 6th. One of the central arguments of this book, uh, Tired of Winning, is Trump's story is one of failure. What do you mean by that? Do you mean that he sort of failed his way through his life, or a failure that we allowed him to be elected, or a failure of the GOP not to hold the line to their principles and their standards? Like, where is the failure in this there, story? There are elements of all that. One is that virtually everybody who came into contact with him ended up failing. And this includes the people that stood up to him, who tried to stop him. I mean, the, the Republican field is littered with 
ruined careers of people that tried to stop Donald Trump. It's the people that were close to him and supported him who ended up, uh, some of them literally ended up in prison, uh, ended up saddled with, with legal bills, uh, lives destroyed. Uh, Hope Hicks, who was as close to him as anybody, there's a really powerful message she sent on January 6th that all our lives are over, we'll never get jobs again, except for working at, from, at a Proud Boys convention. Um, uh, so it's, it's those people, but it's also the profound way that he lost. You know, he won the greatest upset victory in the history of American politics in 2016. But then he managed to go out and lead the Republican Party through a series of losses in every election after that. Special elections, midterm elections, the 2020 election, runoff elections. And the 2020 election, he lost not just to Joe Biden, but then he lost dozens of legal cases. He lost his effort to try to get his vice president to, uh, to turn it over. He, he lost in his effort to get Congress to try to uh, upend the election. Every effort that he took ended in loss. Well, if, if he's such a loser and he spreads, you know, losing like a contagion, yes. and, and he's got 91, you know, felony counts uh, against yep. him now, and, and I know, like, this is a bit of a mystery. You didn't know there'd be another book here, yeah. but what do you attribute the continued relevance of Donald Trump to? Like, why do you think he's such a lasting grip on a party that had many opportunities to end the specter of him, whether it had been either impeachment or just if Kevin McCarthy hadn't gone down there and kissed the ring? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of that. First of all, it's important to remember, less than a year ago, he was trailing Ron DeSantis in polls in one Wall Street Journal poll in December of by 20 points or so. It was flipped just a year yes. ago. Yes, yes. So, so it, it wasn't a total... But, but I think part of what's happened is people look back. There's, there's anxiety in the country. Uh, people have economic anxiety. There's discontent with Joe Biden. And I think there's some superficially a sense of, like, uh, look, if we can only go back to four years ago, the world was relatively at peace, inflation was low, everything was... was I think there's some of that. And that's why I wrote this book, because if people are going to go into this next election thinking about that. They also need to be thinking not just about what Trump was, but what he is now and what he is proposing and planning to do, what a second Trump administration would look like. And I don't think people have come to terms with that at all. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Jonathan Carl, everybody. Stick around. 